Hello students, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to solve example 1.12 in control systems. The problem is write the differential equations governing the mechanical rotational system shown in figure. Draw the force voltage and sorry torque voltage and torque current electrical analogous circuits and verify by writing mesh and node equations. So this is the given diagram. So this diagram consists of two masses with moment of inertia J1 and J2. So the first step is we have to draw the free body diagram of J1 and J2. With the free body diagram we can write the differential equations governing the system. So here the displacement of J1 and J2 are not given. So here we are considering let the angular displacement of J1 be theta1 and angular displacement of J2 be theta2. So the first step is here the free body diagram of J1 is drawn. So as usual here this T is the applied torque right. So to this torque we are considering the angular displacement of J1 as theta1. So let the angular displacement be theta1. So the next step is count the number of elements which are connected with J1. So totally 1, 2, 2 elements are connected. So total number of opposing torques will be 3 in number. So one opposing torque will be produced by this J1 itself. And another opposing torque will be produced by this B1. And another opposing torque will be produced by this K1. Right. Now we are going to write the expressions for each and every term here. So Tj1 is directly proportional to d square theta 1 by dt square. So which is equal to j1 into d square theta 1 by dt square. And the next one is Tb1. Again this Tb1 is directly proportional to d theta 1 by dt. So which is equal to b1 into d theta 1 by dt. And the next one is Tk1. So this Tk1 will be directly proportional to it is connected between J1 and J2. So here we have to write it as theta1 minus theta2 which is equal to K1 into theta1 minus theta2. Again by Newton's law that is by Newton's second law we all know that applied torque will be equal to your opposing torque. So here the applied torque is T. So T is equal to the opposing torques are Tj1 plus Tb1 plus Tk1. So just substitute the respective values. So which is equal to J1 into d square theta 1 by dt square plus B1 into d theta 1 by dt plus finally K1 into theta 1 minus theta 2. Right. So this is our first differential equation which is governing your mass J1. So let this be equation number 1. Right. Now I am going to rewrite this angular displacement in terms of angular velocity. So this which is nothing but d theta by dt should be represented as omega and d square theta by dt square should be represented as d omega by dt. And the next one is theta should be represented as integral of omega into dt. So just substitute these values over here. We will be getting torque T is equal to J1 into. So d square theta by dt square can be written as d omega 1 by dt because here it is 1. Theta 1. So here I am writing it as omega 1. And the next one is b1 into d theta by dt is nothing but omega so here omega 1 plus again here k1 theta is represented as integral of omega 1 minus omega 2 into dt okay let this expression be expression number a right and the next step is we are going to draw the free body diagram of our mass j2 so while drawing the free body diagram, okay, this is this diagram I have drawn from the given problem. So there is no direct torque applied on this J2, okay, and the displacement of this J2 is theta 2. 
so the opposing torques will be produced by here there are totally three elements which are connected with j2 that is k1 k2 and b2 so apart from these three opposing torques an opposing torque will be produced by this j2 so just draw accordingly this is tj2 and another opposing torque by tb2 and another opposing torque by tk2 and finally the last opposing torque by tk1 right now we are going to write the respective values here so that is tj2 is directly proportional to d square theta 2 by dt square so which is equal to j2 into d square theta 2 by dt square and the next one is torque produced by this b2 so this b2 is directly proportional to d theta 2 by dt so which is equal to b2 into d theta 2 by dt and the next one is t k2 and this t k2 is directly proportional to here is nothing but theta 2 so which is equal to k2 into theta 2 and the last one is t k1 and this t k1 will be directly proportional to because this k1 is connected between j2 and j1 so as we are considering j2 here we have to write the theta 2 first so it is represented as theta 2 minus theta 1 so which is equal to k1 into theta 2 minus theta 1 right so here in this case again the applied torque will be equal to your opposing torque there is no applied torque here so here it is zero so zero equal to the opposing torques are tj2 plus tb2 plus tk2 and tk1 so when you substitute the respective values here you will be having j2 into d square theta 2 by dt square plus b2 into d theta 2 by dt plus k2 into theta 2 plus k1 into theta 2 minus theta 1 right this is the differential equation governing mass with moment of inertia j2 so let this be your equation number 2 right now i am going to rewrite this theta in terms of angular velocity so when you rewrite this expression will be having 0 equal to j2 into d omega 2 by dt plus again b2 into omega 2 plus k2 into integral of theta 2 into dt plus again sorry omega 2 again k1 into integral of omega 2 minus omega 1 into dt right this is the respect to equation that is this expression in terms of omega that is angular velocity let this expression be equation number b right our next step is we are going to draw the torque voltage analogous circuit so in this torque voltage analogous circuit to draw this we must be familiar with the A differential equations in terms of angular velocity that is we are considering our equations a and b that is this is your equation number a and this is your equation number b right now i am going to draw the respect to that is i am going to replace all these things in terms of electrical analogous circuit so here the first one we are having is we are having that is in regarding this torque voltage analogy the first thing is this j1 this j1 should be represented as l1 and this j2 as l2 and this b1 should be represented as r1 and this b2 as r2 and here k1 is represented as 1 by c1 and here it is 1 by c2 this is torque voltage so this torque should be represented as voltage here just nothing but e of t and this omega1 is represented as i1 and omega2 as i2 right now i am going to draw the diagrams here so in the first one we are having a j1 j1 should be represented as l1 so here i am drawing an inductor let this be your l1 next one i am having b1 so this b1 should be represented as r1 so just i am drawing an r1 here next one having k1 and this k1 is common for loop 1 and 2 and this k1 should be represented as a capacitor so and this capacitor is represented as c1 right this is your first look 
sorry which is equal to t so here there is a voltage source okay it is e of t there is a voltage source here okay there is a voltage source so this first loop consists that is first expression consists of four elements 1 2 3 4 and totally in our loop also we are having 1 2 3 and 4 totally four elements let the current flowing through this loop is i1 right now consider your second expression so in this expression i am having j2 so this j2 should be represented as l2 here so just draw an l2 here and the next one is b2 so it is nothing but resistor let it be your r2 and next one there is a k2 that is capacitor and this capacitor i am writing that is i am drawing here this is your c2 and the next one is k1 this k1 we had already drawn in the first loop so it's over here let i2 be the current flowing through this loop right so second expression consists of 1 2 3 4 4 four parts and second loop consists of four elements 1 2 3 and 4 now i am going to write the expression for our first loop so when you consider loop 1 we are applying kirchhoff's voltage law so e of t that is supply voltage e of t is equal to voltage drop across each elements in this loop so it is nothing but l1 into di1 by dt plus i1 into r1 and finally here we are having a capacitor so this is 1 by c1 into integral of i1 minus i2 into dt right again just consider your loop 2 we are applying kvl so when you apply kvl here you will be having just i will start with uh, this capacitor again so we will be having 1 by c1 integral of as we are considering loop 2 we have to write i2 minus i1 so i2 minus i1 into dt plus here l2 into di2 by dt plus again i2 into r2 and finally we are having c2 here so 1 by c2 integral of i2 into dt so which is equal to here there is no source voltage so this entire expression is equal to zero so this is our respect to torque voltage analogous circuit hope you all are clear with this right our and our last step is we have to draw the torque current electrical analogous circuit so regarding this torque current again we have to replace all the all the elements in terms of r l and c here so when you replace the things which we are having will be that is initially the torque should be as it is torque current so this torque should be represented as current it is i of t and this omega 1 should, should it is replaced as v1 and omega 2 as v2 and this j1 as c1 and j2 as c2 and k1 as 1 by l1 and k2 as 1 by l2 and b1 as 1 by r1 and b2 as 1 by r2 okay to have a clear idea i had made a video regarding this Uh, torque voltage and torque current are log a circuit it's better to see that video and then you can proceed this problem so these are all the respective things which we have replaced for torque current analog a circuit and the next one is this is our torque voltage analog a circuit so from this circuit i am going to draw the torque current analog a circuit so the things which Which we have which has to be considered are the elements which are connected in series should be connected in parallel. That is the first criteria, and the second one is this voltage source should be replaced by a current source because here we are considering a torque current analogous circuit, right? And here we are having now uh, loops, and there we are representing in terms of nodes. That is here we are having two loops, right? so in our torque current analog circuit we will be having two nodes right so as i already mentioned just mark your nodes let this be your node 1 that is v1 and let this be your node 2 this is nothing but your v2 right so the first thing is here this c1 is the element which is common for your loop 1 and loop 2 right so 
first thing is i am drawing this c1 this as i already said in force voltage and force current analogous circuit the simple thing is just replace inductor by a capacitor and capacitor by an inductor that's it okay here we are having capacitor so just replace this with an inductor here so this capacitor is represented as an inductor it is nothing but l1 right and again here to this node that is in your first loop you are having a yeah, voltage source so this voltage source should be replaced by a current source and this is nothing but your i of t and here next one is i am having an inductor and these two are in series so i have to draw a capacitor in parallel with this current source so here i am drawing a capacitor here this is nothing but your c1 and next i am having a resistor in series with this l1 so again i have to draw a resistor which is in parallel to this capacitor c1 so this is nothing but your r1 right so this is our node 1 to this node 1 totally here first loop consists of 1 2 3 4 four elements and again your first node should should be connected with four elements so 1 2 3 and 4 okay that's it and now consider your second loop so when you consider your second loop again the same thing here i am having a l2 this l2 should be re represented as a capacitor c2 so just draw a capacitor c2 this l2 is in series with r2 so here I, again i have to draw an r2 which is in parallel with c2 and here i am having c2 this c2 should be represented by an inductor l2 right this is your respective diagram for your node 2 so just count the number of elements in loop 2 1 2 3 4 totally 4 elements so here again to this node 2 you will be having 4 elements 1 2 3 and 4 that's it now i am going to draw the respective equation so at node 1 okay you apply kitchas current law so when you apply Kitchas current law, this is your source current that is I of T. This I of T is equal to current flowing through this capacitor is given by C1 into dV1 by dt because this C1 is connected with V1. So here I am writing it as V1. And the next one is current flowing through this resistor is given by V1 by R1. And again current flowing through this inductor is given by 1 by L1 into integral of it is connected between V1 and V2. So, integral of V1 minus V2 into dt, right, this is our first expression. So, at node 2, again apply your KCL. So, regarding this one, as usual, so C2, that is C2 into dv2 by dt, plus again for this voltage drop, that is current flowing through this R2 is given as v2 by r2 and current flowing through this inductor is given as 1 by l2 into integral of v2 into dt plus again here we are having this l1 connected between v2 and v1 so i have to write it as 1 by l1 integral of v2 minus v1 into dt here to this node 2 there is no current source so this entire expression is made equal to 0 so this is our respective expression for our node 2 right hope you people are familiar with this problem if you have any doubt let me know in the comment section thank you